Streets of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest star Tom Bosley. Special guest star Sherry North. Tonight's episode, Going Home. I don't know, did you see me? Mr. Beal? Three down and four to go. Yeah, that's enough for a Sunday. We're already on overtime. Attention all units, possible 459 at 224 Bay Street. Subject seen running... Just around the corner, let's go. ...by two juveniles. Subject described as white male Caucasian... Fellas, call in about a burglary. Yeah, he came out of Mr. Beale's place and ran down that way. What are you doing here? Now, that's what I was going to ask you. I belong here. This is my shop. I'm Lieutenant Stone. Well, what are you doing here? You got a search warrant? Someone called in about a burglary at this address. Oh, you got a false alarm. What happened to your head? I fell down and hit it on the edge of the table. You want to arrest the table for assault and battery, go ahead. I'll come down tomorrow and prefer charges. Nothing. The front door was Jimmy. The cash register is open and empty. The safe is open and empty, and the man there with a bump on his head said nothing happened. It's my front door. It's my cash register. 
My safe and my head. If I say nothing happened, nothing happened. Haven't you people got enough to do without going around making trouble? Come on, let's get out of here. And close the front door on your way out. He's lying? Well, he's got his rights, hasn't he? <laughs> False alarm. We got homicides that are responding to burglary calls. Well, we were just a couple of blocks away. Hey, mister, what about that guy we saw running away? Well, maybe he was just trying to catch a bus. He came out of that door carrying some paper sacks. Yeah, two or three of them full of stuff. Man says he saw nothing. What can you do? Just keep your eyes open, fellas. We need all the help we can get. It's Beal. We've been robbed. Look at this. Look at it. Oh, I finally did something right. thousand dollars. I just finished the tally and entered it in the book. Where is the book? With the money. Who did it? Well, I passed around this uh, description, what the guy looked like, so on and so on. But all I could come up with was a name, Eddie, no address. Well, we'll take care of it. I don't know how the guy knew about the money. I never said a word to nobody, nobody ever. I said, we'll take care of it, and we will. Well, you don't understand. The police were there. Oh, somebody called them. I told them nothing happened, but they've got my name now, and I don't like it. If it's all right with you, Mr. McLean, I want out. Okay, Bill. <laughs> You're out. Thanks. Where's Keach? Cleveland. Get him on a red eye. Beal, first thing in the morning. And then the guy that got that book. You're late. Well, I've been thinking. Before coffee, you're thinking that's dangerous. I remember the guy yesterday. We mean the guy uh, who said he didn't get robbed? He was probably afraid. The guy that robbed him threatened him. He was too scared to tell us the truth for fear that the guy would come back and kill him. E15, that's very good. Very good. <laughs> Let's go and have a talk with him. Why? Well, just to convince him that if he tells us the truth, we can protect him. Well, why does the robbery go talk to him? There was no robbery reported, remember? A little too early for you, too, huh, buddy boy?
you? Yes, what can I do for you? Still warm. At the moment, tow trucks are working to clear the wreckage from both sides. But the bridge is not expected to reopen until one o'clock. Cars and trucks have been backed up for three miles. Hi, Dal. How'd you find me? I just kept looking. Everybody's got to be someplace. Are you planning to move in? Oh, no. Oh, I, I figured you could use some money. So I brought you some. Eddie, please. I, uh, Where's the boy? My sister's. Hey, Donna. How would you like to live in Hawaii? Just... You and the boy and me. Eddie. He doesn't even remember you anymore. And I'd like to keep it that way. That's not right, Donna. Boy should know something about his father. How about it, Donna? We could be a family again, a real family. Yeah, right. Till the prison caught you and sent you back. What for? I don't know what for, is it? For something. It's always for something. And they always send you back. Oh, no, no. Not this time. Never again. I'm a changed man. You said that before. Yeah, that's right, Donna. You're right. Only I wasn't 46 years old then. Will you look at me, please? 46 years. And a good 15 of them in one prison or another. Most of them dead. Empty. And all of them wasted. I, I don't know how much time I've got left, but I do know I, I can't afford to waste any of it. All I'm asking for is one more chance. Go to Hawaii with me today. I can't, Eddie. I just can't. But why? I'm afraid the money will get short and things will get tight. But you don't have to worry about that. No, right, right. Because Eddie will take care of everything. Hey, shut up, will you? Just, just shut up, huh? And look, huh? Look. That's for us, Donna. That's for you and me and Marty. Just us. No more worrying about money. Things getting up tight. I have taken care of things, you see? I'm going to put it in the bank in your name so I won't even be able to draw a check on it. Eddie, where did you get it? It'll last us for years. It'll give us a new start. Eddie. And look, there's more. You stole that. For us, baby, for us. Oh, no, you don't. You don't blame that on me this time. You said you needed money, didn't you? Eddie, I didn't ask you to do that. What is it? What is it? Numbers. Policy slips. Eddie, what are you talking about? I hit a drop. A numbers drop. The mob. I knocked over the mob. 
Even when I do something right, it's wrong. Eddie, take it back. Take it back. No. No, no, Donna, look, it, it, it can still be all right no, because they, they don't know who I am. They will find out, and with your track record, the next thing they'll find is you, and then me, and then Martin. Take it back, Eddie. Nobody heard anything. 32 caliber, 7.65 Luger. With a good silencer, it won't make any more noise than an air gun. Why is that? Barrel pressure zero by the time the breach is open. Had to be a pro, buddy boy. A pro? Mm -hmm. Betty was afraid. Well, at least we've got a couple of witnesses. What two witnesses? Those two kids that called us yesterday. They got a good look at them. Um, Timothy Rochelle and Leonard Ross. Dead? What do you mean, dead? I mean, dead. How many kinds of dead are there? But how? Somebody wasted him. You mean somebody hit him with something? No, I mean somebody shot him with something. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, it's tough. were unscrewed so the hallway was dark. Nobody heard anything. They've only got one witness, and all he saw was two guys chasing Laughlin down this hallway. He couldn't give us a description, though. It was dark, and he was too scared. Sixty-some-odd years old. Well, thanks for the call, Dave. Well, the caliber of this bullet, I knew it had to tie in somehow with that guy who was killed today. Yeah, it's the same, all right. It's gotta be pros. Pros? I don't know any pros use a 32 caliber. It's a Luger, 7.65. Huh? You see, the uh, barrel pressure is zero by the time the breach is open, so when it goes off, it sounds like an air gun. Now I see why you work with this kid. He's a real walking crime lab. Oh, yeah. 
I learn something new every day. Who are they after, you know? Oh, a man named uh, Eddie Coughlin. Here, here's his description. Did he get hit? I don't think so. There was no blood around, and our witness said he went out that front door like a scalded cat. He might. Yeah. This description fits the guy our kids saw come out of the store last night. Call file, see what they've got on Eddie Coughlin. And um, if they have a mug shot, give them to the two boys, will you? And the name of the guy in the tobacco shop? Beal, Eugene Beal. Beal, run a make on him. Right. Pulley, it's me, Eddie. I know it's you, but what do you want? I want a place to stay. Sorry, baby. There's no room at the end. Pulley, I, I, I'm in trouble. I gotta get off the street. I know you're in trouble, but I don't want no part of it. What do you know? How do you know? The word's around, Eddie. You're a sick man. You got a disease, a killing disease. You're gonna die of it, baby. I can pay you. I, I, I got enough money to support your habit. For a year, for, for two years. I can live with my habit. But I wouldn't live a week with that money. Now get lost, will you? Holy, get please, lost. please, I got... Pulling, pulling! identified Eddie Coffin got a record as long as your arm. Another jackpot, Eugene Beale, alias Gene Bates, alias J.G. Bascom. Mostly petty theft, but running a few numbers, making a little book. <laughs> little man working for a big company, huh? Yep. What did you get on the gun? Ballistic says the gun that killed Beale was the same one that was fired at Eddie Coughlin. Okay, now we've got the names. Let's fill in the blanks. Eddie robs Beale. Beale denies a robbery occurred. But then Beale's murdered the next day. But Eddie didn't do it. The guys that murdered Beale are now trying to eliminate Eddie. Why? Yes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Whatever Eddie, Eddie was trying to get was illegal. Or it was stolen from somebody else. Does Eddie have any family here? Let's see. His mother and father are dead. Yeah, he's got a wife, Donna Coughlin, and a son, Martin, last address, L.A. Let's find out where they're living now. Right. This is her sister. Donna's not here at the moment. She took her son to the park. Who's this? Hello? Hello?
but I thought he was retired. Okay. Thanks a lot, Charlie. Now, Vice thinks that Beale might have been a drop for a guy named Grady McLean. Ran the numbers in that area. What did you get? Donna Coughlin, living in San Francisco. Well, there could be more than one Donna Coughlin, you know. Now with a son named Martin. Hi, Martin. You having fun? I can't talk to you. Why? You're a stranger. Well, I don't know about that. I, I knew your name, didn't I? Let me see. Uh, your name is Martin Coughlin, and your birthday is March the 18th, and your mother's name is Donna, and your father's name is Eddie, right? Right. Hey, come here. I want to show you something. Did you ever see a teddy bear that big? That's not a teddy bear. That's a panda. Oh, that's right. It is. I'll tell you something else it is. It's yours. If you want it. No. Boys don't play with dolls. Well, you don't have to play with it. You just... Sort of keep it around for good luck. Okay. Well, what do you say? Thank you. You're welcome. How do you know my daddy's name? Well, he was a, a friend of mine. We used to work together. In Alaska? Alaska? Yeah, that's right, in Alaska. Did he ever save your life? Well, now that you mention it, during the big snow last year, you know, we get a lot of snow in Alaska. Are you Donna Coughlin? No. I'm her sister, Sylvia Wagner. Come in. Uh, Donna. And remember to mind your Aunt Sylvia. Okay, Mom. Can I take my panda? Uh, no. But, Mom, the man at the park said he was fine. He said I should keep him with me. I don't care what the man at the park said. Now, scoot. And mind your Aunt Sylvia. Excuse me. Excuse me. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I know. Police. We're looking for your husband, Mrs. Coughlin. I don't know where he is, and I don't want to know where he is. He's still your husband, Mrs. Coughlin. No, you're wrong, mister. He is garbage. And once you've thrown away the garbage, you don't spend much time thinking about where it's gone or what they're going to do with it. It's just gone and good riddance. When's the last time you saw him? Nine years ago, on his way to Chino. He waved at me through the bars on the bus. Mrs. Coughlin, we have records. We know you were living with him six years ago. He's in a lot of trouble, Mrs. Coughlin. Somebody's trying to kill him. And in order to help him, we've got to find him before they do. Do you understand that? He was here this morning. Well, do you know any reason why someone would want to kill him? The money, yes. He, he was here. He had a great deal of money, a whole suitcase full of it, and some little pieces of paper and a, a book. And when he saw the book, he was terrified. Do you have any idea where he would go? Mrs. Coughlin, your husband's floating. We're looking for him, they're looking for him, and he knows it. Now, is there any place he might have gone? I don't know. There must be some place, some place where he'd feel safe, secure. I don't know, I don't know. Well, maybe.
Maybe. Maybe what? Well, there's, there's only one place that he ever really felt secure, I guess. Eddie's parents died when he was Martin's age, and he grew up on the street. They sent him to Alcatraz when he was 22. He spent nine years there. Are you saying that you think he went back to Alcatraz? I don't know. I just know that Eddie told me that was the first real home he ever had. Three meals a day and a warm bed to sleep in, friends, and uh, somebody who cared whether he was there or not. Being, being on the outside confused Eddie, and he didn't know what was expected of him or where he stood. But in there, he knew who he was, and he knew what they wanted from him. I just think if, if Eddie has no place else to go, he's... I think he's going home, maybe. <laughs> That's him. Let's see. What about the prison building? What about it? Oh, come on, Bags. Would you go there? Sure. Maybe if we could get in. Are the cell blocks open? Which door? Chief, they got a number. What cell was he in? Yeah, I got it. Thanks a lot. All right, I'll let you know. Oh, listen. If you happen to connect with a caretaker, tell him we're on our way. He's got to have a lot of bolts loose going back. Where else could he hide? His choice. Me? I could think of a thousand places if I were there. Uh, the screws turned their heads, which they never did. Put yourself in his shoes. You're running scared. You're trying to find a place to crawl into so they can't drag you out. Come on now, think, Bags, think. There must be some places better than others. I'd head for one of the towers. I mean, by that way, I could see who was coming. Helicopter's ready. All right, right.
Why don't we wait for him here? Oh, yeah. I think we're right back into the middle of Union Square. He's got to come off sometime. I don't like it. What? You know what? Look at him. It won't take long. It gives me the creeps. Shut up. It's like one big gravestone. Yeah, well, for him it is. Okay, fella, on your feet. I said, on your feet? You know you're trespassing on government property. It's all right, I'm not gonna bite you. What are you doing out here anyway? Well, I used to be out here. I just wanted to come out and have a look at it, you know. Were you a guard? No, I, I never walked the wall. I, I walked the yard. You were a con. When were you here? 49 to 57. I came to work here in 59. Yeah, well, I left in 57. When they closed it down, I came back as a caretaker. You know, it's funny, but I like it out here. Well, don't you tell anybody that. They'll think I'm rock happy. They'll probably think I am, too. Yeah. Well, you better shake it if you're gonna get back to the mainland before dark. Sit it down in the yard. There's his boat at the landing. I'm going to get the chopper.
police. We know what happened. We want to talk to you. Do you understand? Eddie, we know you're there. Come and talk to us. Get that chopper started. Then give us a signal when you got it up to speed. Steve, get him out of there. Go. thing and get a doctor out here quick. Eddie? 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 Doctor's on the way. Too late for him. Was this the bank? Check the name of the biggest numbers. McLean. The DA's gonna think Christmas came early this year. Where's the money? Well, my guess is that 
he found a real safe place for it. Here. You do know you're entitled to 10% of that as a reward. I, it isn't my money. But you did find it, didn't you? That's what my report's going to say. Now, you don't know me, but I try very hard not to write more than one report. Hey, what are you doing with my panda? Well, uh, what am I doing with this panda? I'll tell you, it got torn. And uh, I was going to take it out and get it fixed and then bring it right back to you. Is that all right? OK. Were you a friend of my daddy's, too? Yes, I am. Did he ever save your life? As a matter of fact, he did, son. He really did. And uh, someday, I'd really like to tell you about it. Would that be all right with you if I came back and told you about it? OK. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Rick Nelson, Kay Lenz, Darlene Carr, Laurette Spang. Tonight's episode, Harem. Billy, and it'll be all right. Well, hello, 
baby. Glad you could make our scene. We called for two birds. Where's the other one? Just a phone call away. Would you like a blonde or a brunette? No redheads? Oh, let's not argue with the little lady, Eddie. Come right on in. It's all right, baby. What happened? I couldn't do it. I tried. I really tried. I, I got to the door and I couldn't do it. You will, little angel. Don't worry. I can't. I tried. Diane can, but... Diane? I really tried, Billy. Well, and you'll try again and you make it. Now, what about Diane? She was with you? Don't be mad at her, Billy. I'm not, but she's not supposed to work for a while. Now, where is she? I don't know. Just tell me where she is so I can send her home. At a motel. By the wharf. I shouldn't have left her there all by herself. Now, don't worry, she's all right. But don't ever run away again, all right? It's nothing. It's just a way for us to live. You see how easy it is. Now you just go on home, and I'll be there in a little while. Doesn't she have a heavy load this semester? Yeah. Let's see what she's been up to, huh? <laughs> you know what she did last weekend? No, what? Uh... She was in a bicycle race, 50 miles. Finished 87th out of 160 starters. And she says, except for my shoulders and legs, which are a little stiff, but otherwise, I'm fine. <laughs> so that's something, huh? Yeah. Sounds like a tune-up for one of those distance races. 50 miles isn't a real distance? No, no, most of those races are over 100 miles. Did she say what her time was? No. Say 100 miles, how long does that take? Winning time? Yeah. Let's see, four, four and a half hours. Four and a half hours? Yep. That's uh, sevens and the six. Eight, seven, two. 23 miles an hour? Yeah. You mean a kid can keep up that speed for four and a half hours? Sometimes faster and longer. Oh, come on, no I'm way. I'm not kidding. Inspectors 8-1, Harbor Police have a possible homicide at the marina. Will you respond? Inspectors 8-1, 10-4, will respond. All right, hotshot. Let's see how fast you can pedal this thing. <laughs> Morning, Mike. Ernie. Any 
details? No, Agent Freighter crew discovered her body. She wasn't in the water more than a couple of hours. She's no more than 16, 17 at the most. That's my guess, Mike. No wallet? Nope. The position of the body says she went off the bridge. She could have jumped. There are bruises on her upper arms that look like hand prints. As if she was held from behind. Couldn't those have happened when she hit the water, when they took her out? Not likely. There's a bruise in her lower right jaw that doesn't appear to have come from the fall either. That's about as much as I can give you before the autopsy. Thanks. We'll hold on to these. Okay, Mike. See you later. See you, buddy. As soon as we get back, check those phone numbers, will you? All right. You okay? This is Lieutenant Stone. I want to make a long-distance telephone call to Tucson, Arizona. You can charge it to my home phone, please. Hello? Jeannie, this is Mike. Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm fine, sweetheart. How are you? Up to my neck in biology. I've got an exam at 10 o'clock. Well, I won't hold you up. I just called because I received your letter. The one about the bike race, 50 miles? Pretty rough, huh? Well, you get back to your biology. Oh, no, it's all right. No, 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 you're getting good grades now. I, I don't want to mess them up. I'll call you later. Uh, but, but listen, just take care of yourself, will you? That's the important thing. And, and you didn't tell me the time. My time? Yeah, uh, the bike race. Seven hours and five minutes. Seven hours and five minutes? Well, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. You know, you're going to have to get in shape if you want to compete with the champs. They can do 100 miles in four and a half hours, sometimes longer and faster. Mike, are you sure everything's all right? Oh, sure, sure, I'm sure. Everything is fine. I'm going to have to hang up now, sweetheart. And you get an A in that exam, do you hear? Okay. Good to hear your voice, Mike. You too, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's what it was, huh? You were wondering if that girl this morning had written any letters lately? Did anyone ever tell you the doors were to knock on? Gee, no, Lieutenant. They always told us at the Academy they were to knock down. How's Jeannie doing? Well, she's doing fine. How are you doing? Good. I ran those numbers. They were all phone booths. Maybe drops? Got any addresses? Yep. Well, then, let's go take a look. You say that you never noticed anybody, anybody at all, hanging around that telephone booth? Nobody, huh? Well, when it's busy, we don't have time to notice much of anything. When it's quiet, we're usually up front or out in the back waiting for the buses. Well, do us a favor. Keep your eye on this phone booth. And if you see anything, give us a call. There's nothing here. But it'd help if I knew what I was watching for. It'd help us, too. To tell you the truth, we don't know. All we've got is a number. And you've got our number right there. We'd appreciate a call if you saw anything. Okay. I don't think we could have confused that man more if we tried. Oh, I think between us we could. <laughs>
Hello. Hello. Is this a private booth, or can anybody use it? It's mine, but you can use it. You from out of town? Why? Because you look lonesome. I'm not having the time of my life, if that's what you mean. Well, we can fix that, you know. Have you, uh, you got $10? I'm sure I got $10. What can I get for it? Let's see. Your problem is that you're lonesome, right? I'm sorry, I gotta go have it. Where did you learn that? I don't know what you're talking about. I've gotta go. I'm talking about bumping against me to see if I was wearing a gun, to see if I'm a cop. I gotta go! I am. Now, will you be kind enough to show me your identification, please? <laughs> I wouldn't show you sweat. Then I'm afraid you're under arrest. For what? Soliciting. Prostitution. Pig! Now, what good is calling me names gonna do you? If I get mad, I could really get rough on you. And if I don't, then you're just wasting your breath. So you see, either way, nothing good can come of it. There's nothing else to call a pig but pig. Autopsy report? No, ID from the fingerprints matches a missing persons inquiry from Minneapolis. Diane Marks, a runaway, for about seven months. It's a rough way to make an identification. Yeah. Without it, we never find out who she was. All right, now. Would you tell us everything you know about a girl named Diane Marks? Nothing. Well, now she had a card in her purse exactly like the one you had. Same four telephone numbers written by the same hand, but you say you don't know her. Should I? Does she say that she knows me? She can't say anything. She's dead. Went off the Golden Gate last night. That's an old routine. Sorry, but I don't buy it. You've really been around, huh? Believe it. You know, you probably got her down the hall right now with a couple other pigs laying the same lines on her. Then you know her. I didn't say that. Well, why don't you just say the truth? Nobody here wants you to get hurt the same way, Diane. Sorry. I am too. That's all. Did you speak to the DA's office? Yes, O'Brien says you cannot make the soliciting charge stand up. I know that, but what about another charge, baby? Told him she doesn't have any identification, she won't give us her name or address. He says if she's as young as she looks, she might if she's have... she's as young as she looks, another charge means we lose her to juvenile. And if that happens... She'll keep her mouth shut. She'll go to court as a Jane Doe. They'll put her in an institution or a foster home. And the first chance she gets, she'll skip. She'll be out hustling in a month. You're giving her a lot of credit, aren't you? I've been trying to get to her for an hour. Let me tell you, that girl has had plenty of coaching. Okay, I'll get with Vice. I'll pull the jackets and every pimp that's been busted in the last two or three years. Sure, but that's going to take time. We can push for another charge. Suspicion of being a juvenile runaway? I don't know. I'll think of something. And to beat it, she'll have to prove she's over 18. Okay, go on. Odds are she's got some document to prove she's of age. If it's not with her, maybe it's at home. So that'll give us an address and a name. Even if it's a phony, it's somewhere to start. Not bad, not bad at all. <laughs> that little coaching from time to time myself. Listen. Offer her the out. See if she'll take it. You offer her. No, 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 no. You go in alone. You have a better chance. I'll see if I can hustle up the coroner's report. Okay. Steve. Yeah. You know what? I just hope this case is for us. I'd love to get my hands on this scum who could start a girl like that turning tricks.
my uh, baptismal certificate. And if you can count, you'll see that I'll be 19 in three months. Well? Sarah Holt. That's right. It says that you're 18. So, uh, now what happens? So now I give you back your baptismal certificate, and I leave. Whatever you do depends on whatever you want to do. No, uh, watching me or following me? No. The pig with the heart. No persecution. That's your bag, right? Sarah, I am here because the odds are Diane was murdered. Now, that is a homicide. If it is, believe me, you could get killed. I could get killed crossing the street. Why don't you go home, pig? I don't need you. Well, if you ever do call me, you got my number. You know what I think I might do is uh, tattoo it on my arm so that I'm never without it. <laughs> okay. talk to you. Alone. All right, girls, conscious over. Go out and do some beautiful things. Come on, Angel, you're all right. Just let it happen. What's the matter, baby? I was busted, Billy, at one of the phone booths. Oh, but they let you go, didn't they? Just like I said, insufficient evidence, right? Yeah. Yeah, they let me go, but they told me something first. Diane is dead, Billy. What? Diane? They showed me her picture. Showed you? Why, did they say? The cards, the phone numbers. They had mine and hers. What'd you tell them? Nothing. But I want you to tell me about Diane. Angel, who knows? Did they say how she died? They say that she went off the bridge. Oh, no. I know all of your girls, Billy. I know each one. I know their habits, their hang-ups. Now, I know that Diane wasn't that together. I know that she couldn't take it being on the shelf. And I know that she had the bug. Is that why you killed her? Sarah. But I can understand that. I know what could happen if someone figured that they got VD from one of your girls, and I wouldn't want that to happen. I really wouldn't. What I'm saying is... is if he killed her, I don't care. I need you, Billy. Everything I ever... I ever needed got... Wasted or died <laughs> or ran away. I won't lose you, Billy. I won't I won't tell the police anything. But I won't go out and sell myself anymore either. I'll go with you. Like Marty used to. You know, a, a sample. Look but don't touch. Billy, please. I won't say any more about Diane. I promise. Just... Just let me be like Maudie used to be. A first. For you. Only you. I know how much that you loved her. But I'm gonna try to be just the same. I'm really gonna try. You are the same, Sarah. I can see that now. You're strong, faithful. You're different from the others. And a lot like Marty. I'll get some bread. Why? We're going out. Where are we going? Oh, I don't know. To buy you something, maybe. What about those earrings? Weren't you telling me about some earrings you saw someplace? Yeah. Then we'll get them. And maybe we'll go see Marty. So you know I love you just as much. Off top 
the report finally came through. She didn't jump. She was beaten before, and then somebody probably threw her from the bridge. One arrest, no conviction there. There's a sheet. But what do you think of the uh, odds are she was assaulted, Doc? Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, she was either raped or she submitted herself four hours prior to her death. And she had VD. VD could be a motive. When I was working vice, I saw a lot of hookers beat up bad by the guys they worked for because they didn't stay clean. Yeah, but she could have been raped by some kook and killed, too. Not much to go on. Well, there might be here. The address and apartment number of the dead girl is the same as Sarah's. Also, her proof of age had the same birth date and birthplace as Sarah. Let's go get a search warrant. Yes. Hi, Mike. What are you doing here? A phone call from you in the middle of the morning and all that interest in bike racing? Come on, Mike, I'm a detective's daughter, you know. Now, what is it? Nothing. Well, this case may have had me strung out of it, but that's all, really. What kind of case? Steve? Uh-uh. Now, one of you is going to tell me. All right. It was a girl, 17 years old, and she went off the bridge. A suicide? No, she was murdered. <laughs> Do you know why she was killed? Well, she was, uh, walking. She was working the streets. Is that it, Mike? All of it? No, it's just that uh, any time it involves a girl your age or even close, he, uh, takes a little personal. Starts wondering what kind of father he was, and, uh, this time he picked up the phone and called you. That's all of it. Listen to him. My partner here's got a crystal ball, tells him everything, my deepest secrets. All right, Swami, see if your crystal ball tells you to go get a search warrant. <laughs> Swami's on his way. <laughs> Bye, Steve. Come here with me. Did you skip that exam? No, I took the plane just after it. Did I really sound that bad? No, that good. I got homesick. <laughs> it really shook you up, didn't it, Mike? Yeah. Most of them are just ordinary kids who take off from home and end up in the gutter. For no reason, no reason at all. Bad grade, fight with a family or a friend. You weren't worrying about me taking off, were you? No. I was thinking how lucky I am. I really am lucky. 600,000 a year, Jeannie. 600,000 kids a year run away from home. Just read the New York report. 74% of all prostitution arrests are girls under 25. In Boston, the average age is 20. In Miami, it's 18. Do you know what that means, 18? Kids. And now... Now we think we've uncovered a, a whole group right here on our own streets. They're even younger. Kids just, just kids. I, th I thought we were going around the point. No, this is it. This is pretty. Is Marty going to meet us here? No, Angel. She's already here. No. I can't. 
thought that you really loved her. What is love, Angel? Do you know? Does anybody really know? The way I see it, it's just a number people buy and sell. It's like everything else in the world. Goodbye, sir. What's the matter? That flute. Heard it when I dropped Sarah off. Maybe it's somebody's around here a lot. I'll check it out while you uh, talk to Sarah. What's the matter? You afraid you're going to lose your good guy image if you shake her doorknob again? have a few questions to ask, please. Uh, just a second. Somebody complain about the flute? No, no, I just wanted to ask you about a girl, Diane Marks. Sorry, I don't think I know the name. Well, she lives downstairs in apartment uh, 2A. Oh, yeah, I, I, I've seen her around. Man, what happened? She died yesterday. Did you see her at all during the day? No. No, last time I saw her was about four or five days ago. Passed her in the hall, I think. I'm not sure exactly. There's quite a few of them down there, in and out a lot. You know how they are. Yeah. Was well, there anything you can tell us about her? Her friends or anything she said to you that might lead us to people that knew her? No. That's not my scene, man. You know? Yeah. The fact is, they stay down there much longer. I'm going to split. This used to be a very private place, you know? Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh... Uh, Jeffers. Uh, William T. Jeffers. Thank you. Nobody's home. <laughs> you? No, no, he's seen around a few times, but no relationship. Do you believe him? Yeah, I think so. He's, uh, he's not what you call a ladies' man. Oh. <laughs> Look familiar, though. His name ring a bell with you, Jeffers, William T. Jeffers? No. What about when you were on Vice? Ever bust him? No, no, I don't think so, but I'll check it when we get back. Take a look at this closet. All the clothes look as though they're the same size. I don't know whether they belong to one person or a couple of people. They probably all wear them. Oh, well, so that means that we don't know where Diane leaves off and Sarah and the other girls begin, huh? Well, you want to wait? Wait? No, 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 no. We'll put a pick up on Sarah and then we'll run a check on that guy upstairs. What was his name? Jeffers. Jeffers, yeah. No place like home, huh?
I thought you were going shopping. I did. And then I decided the odds were the only way you'd take time to eat today was if I brought it. Where's Steve? Records. What's that? A Reuben sandwich, a Reuben sandwich, and a Reuben sandwich. Yeah, big menu, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, lucky for me, you decided to go away to school. Otherwise, I'd weigh a ton. I'm sorry. Come here. Come back. Come back. Don't feel rejected. She brought one for you, too. Fantastic. Gee, thank you. You're welcome. Did you check out uh, William Jeffers? Nothing. No record, no outstanding traffic warrants. I still think I know that guy from somewhere. What about Bill Jeffers? I tried Will, William, Bill, Billy, W.B. That was a Billy Jeffers that used to play with the Washburn Five. That's it. She's right. But he didn't play flute, did he? No, he played bass. Christy Johns played drums. Who played piano? Jeff Washburn. Right. And Sean Dennis played lead guitar and sang. Say, uh, I don't pretend to know what you two are talking about. But that only adds up to four. That's what made the five so cool. There are only four. <laughs> and they were somebody? Well, they sold about uh, six million records, didn't they? Three of them are at our house. Well, if this is the same Jeffers, what's he doing living in that neighborhood? He made himself a pile of dough, didn't he? Yeah, but that was about two years ago. Money goes. Well, is there any reason why he should be a suspect? Well, he was on the concert tour for a while. Put him in tight with a lot of the groupies. Learned how to pick out the vulnerable ones, how to use them. Lived in the same apartment building. I don't know, though. If he was putting me on, it was a good performance. You said he was a performer. Yeah, homicide, Stone. Good. Yeah. Okay, thanks. What is it? It's another girl. Sarah. Who found the body? Well, that couple out backpacking. When the hand does breathe, he must have scared the killer off before he had a chance to finish the job. Got a murder weapon? No, but it was a knife. He was probably using it to dig the grave with. Took it with him. You got anything? Hey, Sid, bring that case over here, will you, please? We got a perfect cast of the killer's footprints. The other prints here were the girls, the couple that came along. The tide washes away everything every day, so there's no question. The prints belong to the killer. Another hour or so, though, it'd have been too late. Looks like tire trades. It is. They make sandals out of them. Many? Thousands. But if you find this pair, the cuts and scuffs on the sole will nail the killer right to the wall. It's like a car. No two pairs of these will have the same marks. You got both feet? Perfect cast. Right and left. Hey, hey, Mike. <coughs> Another body. It's been here a while, too. Did you get a name? Yeah. Sarah, that's good. Carlisle, huh? San Marino. Run away for 14 months. Born September 1956, 17 years old, skipped when she was 16. What about the other body? Nothing yet. Coroner's office said that she could have been in the ground for, oh, probably two months. What about that rock hero, Jeffers? Vice got anything on him? No, nope, nothing. I checked with Narco, nothing there either. What was he wearing when you went to see him, besides that earring? I mean, was he wearing sandals? No, he was barefoot. Look, let's bring him in and see how he acts here. We don't have anything to say he's involved. Well, what do we have? We have three dead girls and one killer on the loose. No, we don't. It could have been two killers. Two killers. Two bodies in the same spot. Two deaths within a 12-hour period. One. It's got to be one guy. Okay, just take it easy. Relax. Just... Let's look at it through both ends of the telescope. First, let's say that he's a kook. He goes out, makes contacts with the kids, and then he kills them for kicks. 
possible. But she was killed within an hour after I left her. It's not probable. You're right. Leaving the possibility that she was killed because of what she knew by the guy she hustles for. Well, still no tangible evidence to tie those deaths together, except a couple of phony baptismal certificates. And the fact that the same address was on both certificates. Yeah. Well, let's leave that for a minute. Both those girls are dead. Well, what about the other girls that were in the same apartment? What can we book them on? A couple of phony baptismal certificates? No, no, no. We pick them up for the same charge we got Sarah for the first time. Soliciting. Right. They weren't in the apartment, so where were they? In the street. That's right. We have the phone numbers, and who's ever running this operation must change the drops. Diane was killed last night. We picked up Sarah today. And they both had the same numbers. Right. So if another girl is working the streets today, she could have them too. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to like your coach more and more every day. <laughs> well, don't sit there grinning. Get those telephone booths staked out. Yeah, communications, please. Hi, this is Keller on Homicide. I have a request for central radio units, if available, to proceed to telephone booths at the following addresses. This is Central 3, R-1020, is Charlton and Union? 10-4, stand by. 10-4. Shouldn't they be here by now? Get on the horn, find out where they are. No name, no address, Lieutenant. All she says is she wants to make a phone call. You have to let me. It's the law. Did the officer read you your rights? Yes. No. Can't be yes and no. You have to let me make a phone call. Thanks. Now, whoever told you about that phone call should have told you that you have to identify yourself first. Now, wait a minute now. Now, you just think about that for a second. Well, if you wanted a lawyer, who are we to tell them to come and see if you don't give us your name? Kim. Kim what? You said a name. You got one. Did you want to call one of these numbers? No, those are just friends. Look, you said if I told you my name, I could use the phone. That's right, I did. You can use the one on my desk. Oh, you'll have to go through a switchboard. I'll get it for you. This is Lieutenant Stone. I have a young lady here who wants an outside number. Would you give it to her, please? Hello? Yes, the number is 555-6412. Did you get that? 6412. Yeah, it's that on the list. I'll run it. Thank you. 
nobody home? Or isn't home the place you were calling? Who were you calling, Kim? The man who gave you this? Two other girls had the same identical card when we found them. They're both dead now. One girl was thrown from the bridge and the other one was stabbed to death. One's name was Diane and the other Sarah. You knew them, didn't you? I never did what they did. I, I just picked up that phone because... Because somebody asked you to do it, right? Who was that, Kim? Who was it that asked you to hang around that phone booth? Wait for a phone call. Go wherever that call asks you to go and do whatever that call asks you to do. I can't tell you that. Is it someone you really want to protect? Someone who may have murdered two girls just to protect his own life? Ran into the phone company, William T. Jeffers. You tricked me. We are trying to save your life. Jeffers is the one that tricked you. He tricked you into trusting him so that he could use you in the cheapest, most inhuman way possible. Now, where is he, Kim? No, no, Billy wouldn't do anything like what you said. He wouldn't. He wouldn't, huh? Somebody did it to Diane. Somebody did it to Sarah. And somebody did it to a third girl we can't even identify yet. Where is he, Kim? Can you show him to us? Yes. You don't know me, little angel. Did you kill Diane and Sarah, Billy? And that other girl? I don't know this kid. Well, she knows you, and that's enough. I don't know you, and you don't know me. Tell him you never saw me before. Tell him! I loved you, Billy. More than anything. Get him out of here. Get him out. It's her against mine, you know. What she says doesn't mean anything. It could sure look like the phony little trap she really is. They'll never believe her. Not when they hear me. It, that takes care of him. Like Johnson said, every nick in those sandals is a nail in his box. Just a good thing you didn't get a reach, Fred, huh? <laughs> what, was that bad? Actually, it was pretty good. <laughs> so how's Kim doing? Oh, not too good. Would she get back with her parents? Listen, any parent who doesn't put his kid above his own pride should... See, I got a kid waiting for me at home. She's alone. Come on, let's step on it.
look at this. Three deadheads dragging along. Huh? Oh, right here in San Francisco. Uh, you know that people come here from all over the world to taste the nightlife? And look at us. Come on. What do you say we go on the town tonight, huh? Let's go to Barney's, shall we? Barney's? No, wait. You want to go to Barney's for the nightlife? Yeah, you don't like Barney's? They put out the best chili dogs in town, don't they? Lieutenant, I'm with you. Okay, okay, you with me. But you don't like Barney's, huh? I tell you what I'm going to do. You two guys pick the spot, and I'll pick up the tab. How's that for a deal? Is that or isn't that a deal, huh? Oh, is that going to cost you? Oh. Never mind about costing me. I've got the cash right here in my pocket. You just pick the spot. Production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars Mick Morrow, Herb Edelman. Special guest star Anthony Zerbe. episode, The 24 Carat Plague. Why not? You seen what the price of gold is these days? Uh, not this gold, huh? So it's radioactive. Still valuable. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing, Fisher. I wouldn't touch that gold if I had lead wallet. <laughs> Makes you nervous? I'll drive. Got yourself a deal. Just do me one favor, okay? You gotta drive real slow. Just going back to transportation. I know. That's two and a half miles. I'll take it real slow. <laughs>
What's the problem, officer? I sure wasn't speeding. No, but you're dragging sparks. Maybe you got a busted exhaust pipe. You better take a look. Sure, get his legs. Come on! Go! I'll get a move on. Want something wrong? We're behind schedule? No, nothing's wrong. I'm just hungry. Sorry to say, you're holding out on I us. I am not. Look, if there was word one on the street about who roughed up there, I would lay it on you, man, on it. Not if I had your peg wrong. I, I swear, I just don't know. Besides, the paper said that Reeves was in charge of assault investigation. Well, I'm just trying to help out a friend. Thought you might do the same. <laughs> well, it was a good try. Yeah, nothing ventured. Hey, what are you doing? Well, he had the right of way, buddy. He was boy. going too fast. Radioactive material. Maybe it's a hot truck. <laughs> oh, you're bad. You are bad this morning. Really bad. <laughs> There's an ambulance on the way, Sergeant. Okay. Okay. Right. There were three of them involved in the hijacking. The truck carries radioactive material, belongs to California Northern University, and is so labeled. Its direction is unknown. The subject vehicle was hijacked from the Cal Northern campus at 0710 hours. Inspector, take one to headquarters. 
possible hijacked vehicle observed going east on Marina at Buchanan. We're in pursuit. all this stuff costing us? Oh, don't worry about it. It's all coming out of your share. Rick, you got the planchions. Oh, yeah, yeah. A what? It's a planchion. It's a slug. You stamp a coin on it. You know what kind of coin? 24 karat gold, baby. <laughs> How many of these to make? Uh, huh? Mm. 5,000. 5,000, everyone, 24 carats. I don't understand. You guys are... You were city homicide. What does that have to do with hijacking a truck? Well, a felony occurred in Marin County. And your partner died here as a direct result. So that makes the hijackers murderers. That puts them right in our laps. Does this look like them? I don't know. You know, wearing these glasses and the hats and all, I, I can't say for sure. Joe, concentrate on the third guy, the guy that drove off with the truck. Oh, Lieutenant, that guy's just a blur. I mean, it all happened so fast. Tall or short? I remember he's tall. He is over six feet, anyway. Color of his hair, light or dark? He's, uh, he's wearing a hat, just like mine. How old was he? Well, he's all somewhere, you know, around 40. Listen, I'd really like to help you tag these guys, but the first two looked like just ordinary campus cops, and the other guy could have been working for us. Right. Rick, what do you say? When do I start, huh? How about 11 o'clock tomorrow morning? The goal be safe then. Tomorrow morning? It's pretty quick, isn't it? What's going on here? We went through this, didn't we? Well, yeah, but, uh... I don't know much about this stuff. Hey, now, now wait a minute. Look, we all heard this. I heard it. Charlie heard it. Lou heard it. We were playing cards. Les Lawson said it. He said that this goal is safe. After 2.7 days, you can handle it for half a day. And it's already been in the college for two days and it's cooled off, so there's no risk. You know, you guys are right about the time. <laughs> I mean, it's radioactive jazz. We, uh, we never had nothing like this out of the foundry at Quentin. You know what's involved here? There's $500,000. 500000 Thanks a lot. We'll keep in touch. John, thanks. Here comes Olson. Along with the guys in the nuclear science lab. I'm keeping up on your physics. Are you kidding? I barely got past that guy who dropped the apple. Lieutenant Stone, and Inspector Keller, this is Professor William Mason of the California you? Northern University. This is Aid Les Lawson. You fellas got here pretty fast. Well, we can move pretty fast when there's an emergency. Emergency? Mike, can we use your office? Sure, come in. Take my chair. Oh, thank you. Professor Mason, why don't you spell it out for them the way you and Swasson did for me just now? Well, our university operates a research and training reactor in collaboration with the government. And recently, we've been experimenting with gold as part of the reactor shield. After a while, the gold becomes radioactive, so we steam clean the reactor, replace the filters, and then ship that hot gold to a federal installation. That's where you dump it? Oh, not at all. 
We, uh, after a cooling period of two months, we can use it again. Does that mean the gold's dangerous for two months? Only to prolonged exposure. Its peak toxicity period makes a rapid drop in 2.7 days. After that, limited exposure, say as much as oh, four or five hours, is relatively safe. Gentlemen, I'm afraid it's much more serious than that. That was not a routine shipment. The gold that was stolen was mixed with uranium. Now, this requires a highly sophisticated centrifuge to separate it so that it can be recycled. And that's where it was headed. Wait a minute now. Uranium... That stays active for years, doesn't it? Try centuries. That's right. In its present stage, it could be thousands of years. By any chance do the hijackers know what they've got? Well, I'm sure they realize that they're dealing with radioactive material. I'm also sure they don't know how lethal. Then we better keep it quiet. Rudy, can we put clamps on the press? Because um, if they know what they've got and can't use, they're going to dump it. And they're not going to tell us where. Uh, will the government cooperate? Oh, yes. So give them a call. Of course, they've already been on it. They asked me to come over here and explain the situation to you. Well, you know, our PIO has already released the story. Only as far as the gold is radioactive. He didn't indicate how deadly. Right. But we've got to believe that they think the worst of the radioactivity is over within, what did you say? 2.7 days. And if they're aware of the normal cooling period at our school, which is approximately 48 hours, that would be tomorrow morning. Well, that doesn't give us much time, does it? Just another Wednesday night poker game. It's not another poker game. It's the Wednesday night we stole over half a million dollars in government gold. Now listen, nothing's different. Nothing's changed. Tomorrow I gotta work. You sell a track house. Lou sells some hamburgers. Nobody suspects. Nothing's different. Come on, you get a couple of beers, you'll feel better. Come on. Come on. When the saints come marching. Well, you never have mustard. I don't like mustard. Mustard is right. Oh. Hey, I'll bet you, Charlie. My horoscope says they're going to win tonight, so watch out. Reading again? Yeah, you guys weren't supposed to be here till I marked the cards. Yeah. <laughs> hey, where's Eddie? Ah, uh, he can't make it. He called in. He wants to be on a swing shift tomorrow. Where's that? You no, know, he went out in some big shot's boat. He's going to go fishing in the afternoon. Well, I wish you had a horse like you. Hey, this looks great. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. No, but the price of beef, maybe you will. No, not tonight. <laughs> I brought the hamburger from my own place. Pure oh. beef. Well, maybe a little soybean. Mm -hmm. Well, you make a good hamburger. Yeah, what do you know? I've only been to my place once. I uh, expect them bringing real estate clients to hamburger stands. Not even yours, Lou. Who's got for the fifth? You got less? Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. he brings a little class to this game. Mm. That's right. Meanwhile, everybody, eat up. I got some lemon pie, my mother's recipe. I got some pickles. I got, oh. Lemon pie pickles. pickles. Must think we're pregnant or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Les. Hey, Les. Come right Put class in there. Come to your Hey, Les, what do you say? How you Cheer doing? up, man. There's a, there's a mushroom cloud behind every silver line here. <laughs> Sorry, fellas. I had a rough day today. What's the matter, Les? Somebody pressed the wrong button. <laughs> you tried to warn them. I, I bet I wrote 20 memos about our lack of security. What happened? Somebody steal the Adams, some Adams for a bomb or something? <laughs> Vic, you remember a month or so ago I was telling you about all that gold we shipped out? The gold? Yeah, it sounds familiar. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't I hear something about that on the 6 o'clock news? Something about a truck being hijacked right on the campus? Well, that was only part of it. I bet those hijackers think they've got gold they can sell. You mean they don't? No, this, uh, this was a different shipment. This shipment was mixed with, uh, uranium. Sure death for thousands of years. Yeah, but, um, you have to touch it first, right, Les? Well, it was safe enough the way we shipped it. But if it ever gets out of those lead containers... Well, I mean, just like that, or do you get sick of something alone? No, you can hang on for a week or so. Gordy, I could really do with a stiff drink. Can I have uh, some bourbon? You are charged of label, sire. Come with me to the wine cellar. Come on, well, it takes one. Come on, Sal. Yeah, I want to Okay. The 
blow it, Vic. We gotta dump that stuff, man. And you're gonna get to Eddie and warn him about those containers. And there goes Andy. Will you shut up about you and your child, Bride? Baby, you just take it easy. Take it easy now. We'll move that stuff. In a couple of months, we'll move it. Are you kidding? That stuff is hot. Don't come tell me to take it easy now. Remember, this is just another Wednesday night boat, you yeah, know? You gotta warn Eddie. I'll get them first thing in the morning before he even gets near this stuff. I'll just take it easy. Okay, who opens? The muscles, you open, huh? Huh? <laughs> How many guys? Bucks and card game last night. Eighty bucks. Come on, man. A couple of weeks, I'll just be the ante, right? Huh? Yeah, right. Ready to start working on the project when you when, when you finish? Yeah. Of course. Seven o'clock sharp. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty sloppy. Up close, yeah. But who'd ever expect a university police car to be a phony, huh? Okay, check everything out. The kind of paint they use, the kind of wiring they use. What about the cast? Looks like uh, maybe a light car, like a sports car. What have you got on the uniforms they used? Checking every costume house on the West Coast. And yeah, they could have rented them from anywhere. Could have stolen them, too. Could have made them. I'll keep on. You hit. He died. Heart attack. Heart attack? That's not where I hit him. 
the charge is murder, Vic. Murder! Oh, come on, that's crazy. He died as the... He died as the direct result of a felony. The law calls that murder. Yeah. Andy, did she think I had anything to do with a murder? I got a wife and a sick kid. Yeah, the, the, the whole thing's blowing up in our faces. Hijackers and murderers. That's what the police are looking for. He jumped the gun this morning. He what? Before I can get to him, he started casting the planches. Holy cow. God, he's as good as dead, then. He'll cast every slide before he dies. You didn't stop him? What do you mean, stop him? What did you just say? He's dead already, isn't he? What do you want to do, just... You want to blow this thing? Is that what you want to do? Yeah, but what about Eddie? There must be something we can do for him. But tell me what. I'll do it. Tell me. What is it? What? That stuff is worse than poison. Hey, we can't handle it, either. Yeah, but Eddie can. You know, he's going he's to put him in the lead canisters. Then I'll put them in the wooden crates that we made. They'll be harmless in there. They're completely harmless. Are you... Are you saying we're going to go ahead and ship that gold? Is that what you're saying? Charlie, we're talking about a half a million dollars, only now it's split three ways. Forget it! Easy, Charlie, easy. You're talking about killing people. What kind of people are you talking about? You're talking about the kind of people that buy slugs, make them into counterfeit coins, right? And then sell them to the foreign collectors to put them on the glass. You're talking about counterfeiters. No! Whoever touches that stuff, whoever spends any time, can end up as dead as Eddie. And that can end up meeting hundreds of thousands of people. Hey, Dick, Charlie has a point. Charlie has a point, huh? Okay. I got a point, too. You better be aware of it. Right now, all three of us, we're guilty of murder. You can't compare an accident to mass murder. Now, look, we started to pull off a job. We pulled it off. We pulled it off big. And no mass murder tag is gonna, is gonna make me cop out on this. You got that? I'm not going to change anything. Hey, uh, Vic, uh, I'm sorry, man. Uh, Annie, you know how much I dig that chick, but uh, I'm not caring about killing all of those people. Oh, Lou, don't give me all that hearts and flowers. They're going to die whether you're in or out. No, man. Charlie's going to blow the whistle on you, and that is the end of it. Oh, are you kidding? Charlie's going to blow the whistle. You know, he owes in hospital bills over 20,000. If he talks, he's going to be up on trial for murder. He's not going to make any waves. Vic. Hey, Lou, I'm talking about 500,000. And just for you and me, it's a quarter million apiece. How many, uh, how many hamburger stands do you think you can have with that? How many franchises? Hey, Lou, I'm going to tell you something. I mean, I'm going to live with you, really. You're going to need that kind of money to hold on to any. You know that, don't you? These are your blood tests, Eddie. Yeah. And there's something very wrong here. Eddie, have you ever been exposed to radiation? You lied to me. Well, who? Yeah, who? Am I gonna die? Am I gonna <laughs> die? I think we'd better go talk to somebody at the hospital. Right away. Eddie? Thanks. So like I said, we traced the owner of the car, and he said it was taken from this lot. Yeah, well, like I wouldn't know. <laughs> I mean, like I'm not stuck here all day, you know. Son. This picture mean anything to you? Looks like a dude who gave me a ticket once. Yeah, looks just like him. Cost me 16 bucks. And I'm a real careful driver. Real careful. Always have been. Inspectors 8-1, Inspectors 8-1, will you respond, please? Inspectors 8-1, Inspectors 8-1, will you respond, please? Inspectors 8-1 to headquarters. This is Stone. Senator Dr. Halpert just phoned in a severe case of radiation poisoning. Give me what you've got. Edward Whitney, male Caucasian, 46, widower. Lives at 816 Junipero Lane. That's my 1020. <laughs>
Thanks, man. What are you doing? You knew. You knew when you let me do it. Why, Vic? Why? What are you talking about? I'm dying! Oh, don't tell me you didn't know. You had this thing wired from the beginning. You knew this stuff was dangerous. You let me work it anyway. Why, Vic? Why? Did you swear? I swear I didn't know. Shut up! Eddie. Eddie, listen to me. Listen to me. You gotta believe me, I didn't know. I mean, maybe, Eddie, maybe, maybe the doctor's wrong, Eddie. Huh? Maybe the doctor's wrong. You killed me, Vic. In fact, you know what? I'm dead already. Did you know that? I'm standing here talking to you, and I'm dead already. Hey! Okay, Vic. Okay. You're king of the hill. The whole lousy mountain. Hey, you only talk to one doctor, right? Yeah. I mean, there are others, right? Huh? There are others. You didn't talk to anybody else, did you? He's no good. I'm dying. And you can bet I'm going to talk because I'm not going to let anybody else go through what I'm going through. Unless you want to use that. It's your choice, Vic. Oh, buddy. What do you want from me, Eddie? Huh? What do you want from me? What did you say? A scintillation counter? And that's a new one on me. Well, basically, it's a Geiger counter. We've got both in there. Yeah, that truck's working like a beacon. They wouldn't have left it here unless they already moved the gold. Say, do we know who manages this property? Not yet, no. Professor Mason, the locks on the rear doors of the truck were Jimmy. This is Lieutenant Stone. Anything you can avoid touching in there, we'd appreciate. What's your reading? Barely clicking. If the gold's here, it's under shield about the lead containers. Did you find the containers? Not yet. There is some smelting equipment. It's hotter over here. Not lethal right now, but it was not too long ago. Did you find any molds? Not any. But you don't smelt without a mold. It means they've already changed the gold. But into what? It could be jewelry, sculpting, anything. Doesn't matter. Whatever shape they dump on the foreign market, buddy boy, that's where the big money is. Well, what of his jewelry? They got enough gold there to make thousands of items. This is Lieutenant Stone again. I want to bring my crew in there. Any danger? Just a few minutes, Lieutenant. Just to be sure. Mike? Yeah. These nails. They're not galvanized. You know, all the salt air, they should be rusty unless they were new. Yeah, fresh sawdust, too. Yep. Packing cases? Camouflage or both? Yeah. Curly, check the sawdust. Find out the kind of wood, will you? Have the coolers make a full rundown of those nails and um, this hammer, too. Well, buddy boy, this whole package is slipping away from us. We don't know how it's wrapped. We don't know what shape it's in, what size. We know nothing. Mike? I just yeah. got a call. A body was fished out of the bay with the skull caved in. Well, does it tie? The medical examiner said it was so full of radiation, it would have been dead in a couple of days anyway. Or acute anemia. Yeah, thanks. Well? Uh, I don't know, Lieutenant. I... 
I couldn't uh, definitely identify this as one of the three men I saw. The, uh, the medical examiner's report indicates there was a severe arthritic deformity in the man's right foot. Enough for a limp? Bad limp, yeah. Well, I'd say that definitely rules out this man. Three I saw are moving real good. No limp. Yeah, Stone. Yeah? San Quentin? The Foundry? That tells us how he fits. Yeah, go ahead, shoot. Take this down, Steve. Real estate office, Ellsworth and Hogan. Did you say downtown? Downtown. Thanks. to melt the gold, but he never would have touched it if he knew it was hot. Well, how do you figure it then? He found out later, started screaming some and nailed him? Something like that. Or the papers. Hey, let, let it be at that, okay, Vic? Let, let's talk it up to experience. What kind of service is this? Can I get a cup of coffee? Mm -hmm. Black. <coughs> but I made a backup arrangement. The only thing is, is it's only going to give us 300000 must meet him in an hour. 300,000. I know it's 200,000 less, but still 150,000 apiece. Yeah, but it's like sitting most of the body plague, man. 150,000 tax free, Lou. Tax free. I'll be back at five. You take it easy, man. Seat. Yes, I was handling the sale of that building, Inspector, but you know how it is with all those old barns down at the waterfront. The uh, city engineers have condemned it. It was due for demolition. When was that? Hmm? It's to be Monday, but I imagine with your finding that stolen truck there, that uh, be keeping it for Evans. Who else had the keys? Oh, everyone who worked there. I can imagine somebody uh, keeping a spare key for himself. Uh, before the building was condemned, did you show it to any other prospective buyers? Yes, I did. Quite a few. Oh, thank you. Did any of the men happen to look like this man here? Uh, no, no. Everyone there was a good deal older. You ever seen him before? No, no. You sure? Positive. Okay, thank you very much. Eddie dead? It just doesn't seem possible. He worked for me here for 11 years. He was a good friend. He was a Good friend. Do you know about his prison record? Of course I know, but he stayed out of trouble since then. Uh, we have reason to believe that Mr. Eddie Whitney was involved in a major crime. It's unthinkable. So is dying of radiation poisoning. That's right. That's what he would have died of unless somebody had bashed his head in for him first. What? I believe he was in on a robbery involving half a million dollars of radioactive gold. 
I heard about that. But Eddie? Well, he had at least three associates. One of them looked like that. Fred, I can't help you. Well, do you happen to know if he has a friend around 40 years old, dark complexion? I'd say his height was about, oh, 6'4", 6'5". Look, Mr. Sondheim, we're working against the clock, and there's a lot of lives at stake, so if uh, you have any information at all, we should give us a call, all right? Not to worry. It's in the bank. <laughs> Her account. What's all this hysterical garbage on the phone? Don't you jump on me, lad. Jump on you? I don't even know what's about. I figured you guys were friends. I mean, how am I going to tell the cops that my best friends are a gang hijacking gold? The whole crazy thing cooked right up here in my own apartment. Gordy, get a hold of yourself. It was Vic. Who was Vic? I don't know what you're talking about. The picture. They had a picture of him. The hijacking of that radioactive gold on a truck, Les, that's what I'm talking about. You I'm talking about, the mastermind. That's what you are, isn't it? And they described Lou to me, too. Who did? The police. Oh, no. Man, it had to start with you. You and your fancy job at the university. All the time I thought you were making small talk about your job, but right under my nose you were planning the hijacking. And is Charlie in on it, too? Charlie, good old Charlie, the family man, is he a crook, too? And a killer. And Eddie. Poor Eddie. You've got to. After all these years of going straight, you've got to. Operator, this is an emergency. Get me the police. So help me, he talked me into it. I tried to get out of it, I really tried. My wife, she's only 23 years old, it's crazy, I know, but the, but the gold, that was not my idea. Vic Tolman's not at home now, where is he? Yeah, Vic, that's him. He, he planned the whole thing, my buddy, the hotshot creep. Take it easy, take it easy. Does he have the gold? Yeah, he got it all. Where? Uh, he's on his way, uh, a fence. I, I don't know his name, Vic, Vic didn't tell me his name. Easy does it now. What's he driving? A uh, panel truck, 71 Ford. Color, license? Green. What license? It's my truck on the side. It says Lose Clown Alley. Lose Clown Alley.
He's not crying for himself. I don't want you to think that about Charlie. Do you have a son, officer? Lloyd, read him his rights. $148,000, This deal was $300,000. When I'm certain the gold is safe, you'll get the rest. Just wait a minute. No, we wait two months, both of us, until the gold is completely cooled. the other side. Arch, what the fun? It gives you a finer ripple, doesn't it? Sure does. Kind of makes you think. Say, you know that case we were helping Reeves with before all this exploded? Yeah. We probably never will nail that clown now, will we? I don't think so, no. No. Maybe it doesn't matter if you lose some of the little ones. As long but, as you win some of the big ones? That's right. Can I quote you on that? Oh, sure. <laughs>
Streets of San Francisco, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Carl Malden. Also starring Michael Douglas. With guest stars, Sidney Hasso, Diana Douglas, Stephen Oliver. Tonight's episode, Chapel of the Dam. dead until after she got in the elevator. I seen her go in, I seen the elevator go up, I, I figured she was in there, you know? Okay, Cyril, thank you very much for your help, and just give the officer a description of the car. Dick, when you call in telecommunications, I want two units to check the immediate vicinity. Our car's gonna get dumped quick. It was a maroon Thunderbird. She's not dead. That I would know. You sure? Yes. Well, then what? Where is she? Now, listen to me, Eddie. Listen to me. You must have faith. She will come back. Mrs. Sloan, according to the doorman, your daughter came in a little before 6 this morning. Is she in the habit of staying out that late? 
Until recently. She's been seeing this boy. Having an affair, if they still call it that. What's his name? Dylan. Mark Dylan. He has long hair and no manners and no prospects and no education. Oh, and Julie just happened to mention that, that he's been to jail. Perfect son-in-law. She was with him last night? Well, I assume so. Where else would she be until that hour? Mike. Oh, excuse me. Got anything? Yeah, the cable of the TV monitor was gimmicked and all the leads were cut and taped. This guy really knew what he was doing. It looks like there were two. One guy cut the cable, the other one went across the garage, hid in the elevator, then taped it up to look normal. What do you got? Over here. Came in the morning mail. The recorder was in the case. <laughs> do you know where your children are? <laughs> yes, indeed. Kidnapped. Well, if you want to get her back. Just sit down, relax. Take it easy. Say nothing at all. No cops. No cops. And we want a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, we'll be in touch. Sit tight. Say nothing. Uh, oh, we'll call when... Um... At the tone, the time will be 12 p.m. exactly. The splicing tape could be prints on that. Run it through the lab. Case two. Who's the other lady? Friend of the family. Bob, how you doing? Phone is here, and the junction box is in the other room. Let me show you. What's that man doing? Well, uh, we would like to monitor the phone. You see, the people who have your daughter will try to contact you, and when they do, he'll be able to trace the call if the phone is monitored. And then there'll be more police? And the FBI? Yeah, we can request a viewer to come in after 24 hours if we really need them. But I feel we could really use the monitor on the phone. Please, be careful. They said no police. If they find out, they might... Look, I don't care about catching them. I just want my daughter back. I understand how you feel, Mrs. Sloan. We'll do the best we can. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, please, uh, please don't touch that, will you? There might be fingerprints. You won't find any. How do you know that? Out of Vasilia, her special powers, she... she can sense things. Well, I conduct a circle of students who are interested in psychic phenomena. Mrs. Sloan is a member of my group. I've seen her do some incredible things. She can help us, I know she can. May I? Yes, yes. Now, what do you want to do? You want to, uh, you want to hold the recorder? Yes, you see, when people touch material objects, they leave traces of their aura. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. I... I sense it was shrewdy. Hindu word. Remember as we spoke about the different chakras? Yes. A man with... with some trouble in his mouth. Throat. Yes. Yeah. Nothing more is coming through. I'm sorry, that's all. I can't tell anything else. I'm sorry. That's all. Well, this case is as good as solved. <laughs> all we gotta do is find someone with the Vishahuni in his cackle. <laughs> yeah, you like that Vishahuni, huh? Are you a skeptic? No, I'm just more interested in this part of them than I am in this part of them. Sounds like we start with the boyfriend, right? Right. I got his phone number from the girl's address book, also where he works. You want to take him? No. You go by yourself. I'll grab a cab and go downtown and check out his record. Okay. And Steve, take it easy with him, will you? Why, you got another idea? No, but 
He's done time, and it won't hurt him to think that somebody wants to send him back. Well, why don't I go downtown? What for? I don't slip into a white suit, get in a white car. Oh, come on now. Get it started and get out, will you? I know, you and your Vesuvia, huh? <laughs> wants to talk to you. Hi. My name is Keller. Is there uh, anywhere we can talk without catching pneumonia? <sighs> How cold does it get in there, anyway? 20 degrees. 20 degrees? Must take you a little while to get used to it, huh? Yeah, well, it's worked. You said you want a few minutes? Yeah. You know a girl named Julie Sloan? Why? Were you with her last night? Look, what's this all about? She was kidnapped. What? About quarter to six this morning, somebody got her. Kidnapped? Were you with her last night? Yeah. Yeah, we caught a flick, and uh, then we went back to my pet. She left sometime this morning, went home. You took her home, huh? No, no. Like I told him, I was asleep. I don't even know what time she went. You were asleep. Sure. That's right. That's great. Just great. And who did you call after she left? Nobody. Look, I know what you're trying to do, Stone. I'm asking you, who did you call? I didn't call anybody. I'm telling you, I don't know anything about now, it. Now you know the family's loaded, right? And we know that you like a good ripoff every now and then. That was a long time ago. Two years, just long enough to build up a good appetite. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto. Hm. A Ferrari. All right, so I got high with a bunch of guys, and I stole a car once, so why? So don't try to con me! You set up that Sloan girl, didn't you? I didn't have anything to do with it. Sonny, your friends ran over a newsboy when they came out of that garage. He's dead, and we're talking about murder. If we don't get that girl back, you haven't got a prayer. Now, do you understand me? All right, Mike, Mike. Easy. Did you get a cup of coffee? I don't need a cup of coffee. I know his type. I've seen him on the streets for 20 years. They're all alike. They gotta make it big and they gotta make it fast. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, Sonny. If you don't spit out the truth, you and I are gonna have a talk. And it's gonna be soon. Cool. Your partner's crazy. No, he's not. No, he just thinks he's right. They say when you've been around long enough, you know. You don't believe it, do you? Keller, I'm telling you the truth, and you've got to believe me. You have to. All right, let's go through it again. Hey, Mike. Hmm? Just got a call. They found the car. Where? The Embarcadero. Tow truck just brought it in. Do it. What do you say, Charlie? Anything? Yeah, the paint looks like it matches the flakes on the hit and run. Any prints? No, it's clean so far, but we got a good heel mark on the right front floor. It's a man's shoe, narrow, probably an Italian make or copy. What's this? Uh, that's sawdust. This was down there, too. Broken glass? Plastic. Contact lens. Can you trace it? Well, it depends on how much we have here. Possible to run a prescription down on it if we can reconstruct it. But well, that's a long shot. Keep shooting, will you? Okay. Did you get anything? Maybe. How about the boyfriend? I let him go. Why did you do that? Because I believed him. I even believed you for a moment there, man. I thought you were going right down his throat. Well, you got to yell at somebody once in a while, otherwise you get an ulcer. Yes, yeah, so I've noticed. What do you mean? Come on, we got exactly 20 minutes till the next phone call to Sloan's. Is everything? 
All right? Yes. Lieutenant, come on in. The call come? No. No. The Madame Vasiliev has been trying to overlook the people who took Julie. Oh, that's good. Now we've got two minutes left. And are you ready? Yes, sir. She has seen something. I want you to listen to her. I appreciate your faith in that woman, Mrs. Sloan. But I think you'd better let us do this our way. Well, just what have you done? Put a policeman in my living room. What good does that do? Look, I want you to listen to her. She knows. Adele. Olga, will you tell them, please? It's hard to explain to someone who doesn't share our beliefs. Look, if you, uh, if you feel something, you should tell us. It's... It's how the lieutenant feels that's important. If he's as skeptical as he looks, I'm sure he doesn't want to hear. It's my business to be skeptical. And I don't mean to offend you. Oh, you haven't. You haven't. Not at all. No. You're good at what you do. Very good. As a matter of fact, I have great faith in you, even if you have none in me. Thank you. You're very kind. Lieutenant. All set. Just keep calm. And agree to everything they say. Try to keep them talking. Adele, trust him. Hello? Mrs. Sloan? Yes, this is Mrs. Sloan. Then you know who this is? Yes. Where's my daughter? Where's Julie? She's fine. You just pay attention, you hear? Pay real good attention. You go to the bank and get $100,000. Old bills, you understand? Then you go home and wait. We'll tell you what to do after you get the money. You've got two hours. Wait. Wait, please. You heard his voice? I heard. Not enough time for a trace. Well, you just stay with it. Lieutenant, please. You heard his voice. Won't you listen to Olga now? I heard him say $100,000. Can you get that much? Yes. Well, then you go out and get it and bring it right back here. Madame Vasilia, before the call, you said you saw something. No, I didn't see anything. I... I received a sense, an aura of a certain place. Where Julie is? I can't say that for certain, Adele. Well, where is this, uh, this place? Well, I can't tell you an exact location, but the aura was blue. A blue aura? Meaning what? Well, that's open to interpretation, but for me it would be sky, water, something cool, very cold. Is that it? Yes. Things appear differently on the astral plane than they do in the material plane. Well, I wish I could understand that. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to stick to my own plane. Man, you must be something else with a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> no contest. I don't think I ever finished one in my life. <laughs> don't let Mike hear you say that. And don't let Mike hear you say what? Easy, Lieutenant. Easy. Okay, okay. How you doing? Doing it. Hey, why don't you two dudes back off a little bit, okay? What's the matter? Are we troubling you? Yeah. <laughs> but... Did you get the money? No, she's still at the bank. They didn't have enough of the old bills on hand. We got time still. Yeah, this is a smooth operation. I don't think they'll go for a stall. We still have to mark the money when we get it together. Mike? Finally made it, huh? Yeah, just don't anybody sneeze. Central Optical Supply. We know that's the company that made the blank. Mm. I wish the prescription was more complete. Uh, some sort of uh, astigmatism. It was smashed into a million pieces. It was the best the lab could do. Yeah. 
The company said it was a special lens. They also said that you were one of a half a dozen people who ordered it from them within the last year. Yes. According to this information, it's a sports lens designed for strenuous activity. It has a groove around the edge to hold it in place. Now, I've only fitted one patient with it uh, recently that I can recall. Uh, uh, here we go. Rubiro. Carlos Rubiro. Got an address? Yeah, 92 7th Street, Hotel Atlanta. You know, this address is a year old. Yeah, residential hotel. Probably still lives here. Well, thank you. We can manage. Search warrant. been around. Never mind where he's been. I want to know where he is. He's got Mrs. Sloan's number in his book. Sports lens, all right. Here's the trophy. Mm -hmm. Hey, here are some other trophies, too. Hmm. Here this. This guy really does get around. At least we know what he looks like. Shooter. Think he's got the other one? Maybe. Looks like a 12 gauge over and under. Fancy, too. Five, 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 seven, three, seven, one. Seven, three, seven, one? Yeah. <laughs> Cal Pacific Airlines. How did you know that? Now, you're not going to pull those parlor tricks on me, too, are you? I called it yesterday. Why is that? Well, I had a little time saved up. I thought I'd take a little a vacation. vacation. Maybe. Behind my back. Well, it wouldn't be much of a vacation if I was with you. Go ahead. You want to go on a vacation? Go on a vacation. Who's this, Andy? Keller, yeah, how you doing? Good. Listen, you run an APB for us? Ribeiro, R-U-B-I-R-O. Carlos, male Caucasian, about two, five foot ten, 170 pounds, dark eyes, dark hair. No, no make on the clothes. Also, check with Cal Pacific Airlines. See if his name's in their passenger list, will you? Good. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Read this. Waited till 9.30. Where were you? Mark. As in Mark Dillon, right? The guy that you let go. Silly, if you remember. She says it could have something to do with being cool. That's sort of calling the shots. Next, you'll be asking me what sign I was going All to. All right, forget about her. What about the sawdust in the car? They got sawdust in a nice house. They sure do. And I'll bet Dylan left some on the squad room floor when you let him walk out. That's right. Uh... Hey, Mr. Cowan. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Listen, now, is Dylan around? Oh, you're not going to be seeing him around here anymore. Why is that? Well, look, you're a couple of cops, right? Yeah. You gotta deal with that element. Me? I don't need the aggravation. You fired him? Yeah, as soon as he came back from seeing you. You got an address? Sure, it's in the office. Listen, would you mind if we uh, took a look around here first? 
What's the matter? You don't believe me? No, it's not that. It's just that we're here. We're here, Mike. We're here. Okay. Is there any place that he ever hung out by himself, was alone, away from everybody else? Uh, well, storage room, I guess. He was icing it up for a big order we got coming in next week. Mind if we took a look? Sure, but nobody's going to be hiding in there, unless he's part polar bear. It's awful cold in that room. Here, you better take this pocket. blocks come from? Oh, they come from a shoot over here. Need a new batch anyway. Stand back. Keep your feet out of the way. Go. Nobody came out here. Back. I'm sorry, Mike. You didn't spook him, I did. I let him go, though. I didn't think he was a tight. That's all right. Let's put out an APB on him. this come in? About 10 minutes ago. Oh, dear God. I... Mr. Sloan. No. It's all right. It's all right. right. Hey, sit down. I'm sit right. right here. She's still alive, isn't she? They, they won't hurt her. Not if I do everything they say. We'll never know that for sure. We just have to keep working. Now, listen carefully. Please, get some water. All right. Listen to me, Mrs. Sloan. Did you know a Carlos Ribeiro? Yes, why? Well, I... We found your name in his address book. Now, it would help us if you told us everything you know about him. We were involved with each other for a while. My husband's been dead for six years. Then he knew Julie. Naturally. But I haven't seen him recently. I became aware after a while that, that his motives were not what I thought they were. He wanted money? Yes. Looks like he found another way to get it. Do you think he's one of them? Not anymore. He's dead. He could have been one of them, but somebody dealt him out. Did he know Mark Dillon? No. Yes! Yes! 
Yes, they, they met here one night when Julie came home late. Hey, that boy did it, didn't he? With Carlos. And now he's got Julie. Maybe, maybe. Where did you meet Ribeiro? The, the chapel. At the chapel? It's the chapel of the mind. You gotta give her credit. She knows how to put a scene together. Well, maybe you could get her to decorate your apartment. Lieutenant Stone, what a pleasant surprise. You mean to say you didn't see us coming in that little crystal ball of yours? <laughs> I see you have your information about psychic matters from the comic strips. I don't use the crystal. Oh, that's too bad. I thought maybe you could look into it and tell us something about Carlos Ribeiro. Won't you sit down, please? Over here, please. Carlos Ribeiro. Yes, please. Now, what about him? Well, I'd rather hear it on your plane first, if you don't mind. Not at all. He was a member of our group for a while, very interested in psychic phenomena, but uh, he had no ability, a dilettante, really. So, eventually, I asked him to leave the congregation. When was this? About six months ago. Now, you haven't seen him in six months? No, why? Does he have anything to do with what's happening? Well, not anymore. He's dead. He's dead? Murdered. In a place that had a very cold aura. A nice house. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Then apparently he was involved in what's happening. Lieutenant, are you implying that I am, too? I'm not going to imply anything. I'm going to just lay it right flat out. I don't think anybody could come up with two long shots like you did. First the guy on the phone, and then Ribeiro's body. <laughs> well, I suppose I should be offended by what you're saying, Lieutenant, but I'm used to it. You're not the first person who does not believe that there are hidden mysteries because you can't see them or hold them in your hands. Less than two centuries ago, people were denying the existence of electricity for the same reasons. All right, getting back to, uh, to Mr. Ribeiro, excuse me. Can you tell us anything else about him? Only that he existed in this world by playing on the emotions of wealthy women. And you don't approve of that. Lieutenant, I have been as patient as I feel I can be with you. I've told you I'll do nothing to interfere with your work. I've told Adele Sloan to put herself entirely in your hands. In fact, it was I who advised her to bring you people in, regardless of the message on the tape recorder. You asked her to call us? Yes, she wasn't going to. She was frightened because of what the message said. I see. Well, then, I guess I owe you an apology. You owe me nothing, Lieutenant, but your assurance that you'll do everything in your power to keep Julie alive. Please. She's got to have a record as long I'm as I'm telling you, Bunko says she's clean. What about aliens? None that show up. No, look. They checked that chapel out the first day it opened. Like any other hustle, it all scans legit. I don't believe it. <laughs> I must say, I don't believe what I see coming through that door, either. Dylan, what the... Keller, I need help. Okay, good, good. And you've got to keep him away no from... No problem. Here, sit down. Over there. Look, Keller, what do I have to do to convince you guys that I haven't done anything? Dylan, you ran. I was scared. I got the phone call. And then your partner there kicked in my front door. Now, wait a minute. What call? Uh, some guy. He said you were coming to bust me. 
Do you notice anything funny about the way the guy talked? Yeah. Yeah, he stuttered. How'd you know about that? Mike? I came here to talk to you, not him. <laughs> That's all right, son. Why did you come here? Well, where could I go? How far could I get? Look, whatever it is that's happening, I need help. I got no place else to go for it. Did you write this? Yeah, where'd you get Never that? Never mind, did you write it? Yeah. To whom? Julie, who else? Homicide Stone. Yeah, where? Got it. Steve. Yeah. Put somebody on. Mrs. Sloan got her call. Where are we going? Telephone booth, airport. myself as you said you're a liar there are cops all over the place you think we don't know what's going on no no please please look i brought the money just tell me what to do with it all right lady just shut up and listen you do exactly what i say put the case on the ledge next to the phone it's there now count to five and then knock it over make it look like an accident yes under the seat there's another case exchange them then go down to the the helicopter waiting area and sit tight to go someplace else. Well, the figures, they know we're around. They're going to try to shake us. Wrong. 
boss sitting next to us, see what they said. Oh, spot you. We gotta do something. Well, let's give it another ten minutes. You got it? Yes, I've got it. He said he knew that the police were there and that he would kill her and that there was this case at the bottom of the phone booth and that I should switch them and then just, just come here and wait. Matching case, we should have figured that. Well, you can't figure them all. It's all right, Mrs. Sloan. Come on, we'll drive you home. You think they'll let her go? We'll just have to wait. Check out that body. I'll call an ambulance and notify homicide. questions yes i think so now i know this is unpleasant but the man that was killed was he one of them yes he's the one i had to stay with was there anybody else involved carlos ribeiro anybody else no just the two of them now there's got to be a third somewhere mark dylan mark he's one of them i know he is if you find him, I... Mrs. Sloan, we know where he is. At least for the last couple of hours. Julie, the man that was killed, did you hear the shot? Yes. Well, now, this is very important, Julie. Do you know how much time it took between the time you heard the shot and the time the policeman found you? I'm not sure, but I think it was just a few minutes. It can't be Dylan. He couldn't have pulled the trigger. Well, he could have set it up. Gave himself a perfect alibi. How could I set up anything? I was here all the time. Could be the truth, son. Or it could be a pretty smart move. Print report they found on the shotgun, Mike. They belong to Dylan. Well, that's beautiful. What, he shoot the guy by ESP? Dylan, you heard the man. Now let's hear it from you. How did your prince happen to get on Ribeiro's shotgun? Ribeiro set me up. I was the real pigeon, Ribeiro, my friend. That's why he offered me a ride home that day. He had the guns in the car. Here, Dylan, look at the pretty little gun. My fingerprints all over the place. Well, we've only got one suspect left. Preacher Lenny, with a sword. Destroy Lenny, with a pentacle. Party's over, madam. Go 
Don't be disturbed, anyone. I'll be back in a moment. This way, please. You hold this one. Thank you. This time, I think you do owe me an apology, Lieutenant. There's a sucker born every minute, isn't there? I beg your pardon? All these years, it's been nickels and dimes, hasn't it? Nickels and dimes, until you met Mrs. Sloan. And then she was big money. She was worthy of your best effort. Only it had to be a perfect con job. No witnesses. That's why you killed those two stooges who did the kidnapping for you, isn't it? That left you $100,000 in unshared profit. We never have communicated very well, Lieutenant. But this time, I'm not following you at all. Oh, it's not a matter of you following me. It's always been a matter of me following you right down the path that you laid out. First, it was the broken lens. That led us right to Ribeiro. And then it was the sawdust, the note. That led us right to Dylan. And he was the best one, wasn't he? He was the perfect suspect. Because once we found his fingerprints on that shotgun, he could cry innocent all he wanted to, but we wouldn't believe him because he was a perfect ex-con. The perfect criminal type. <laughs> really, Lieutenant? It would have worked. It really would have. Except he didn't react like a criminal. Do you know where he was when you pulled that trigger? Headquarters. He's been there since 5 o'clock this afternoon. Are you finished? No. You are. You're under arrest for kidnapping and murder. Arrest? You can't arrest me. What are you going to use for evidence? Your fantasies? No, no fantasies. We figured you'd object, knowing the law the way you do. So we brought along a search warrant. Mike, I got it. should have looked. Booker. Well, the doctor wants to keep her here overnight. But I can take her home tomorrow. Well, that's good. I don't know whether you can stand any more good news or not, but um, we recovered your money for you. Oh, that's good. I'd have gladly given it up, though, you know. The important thing is to get Julie back. Uh, look, Mrs. Sloan, I realize that it's none of my business, but uh, Dylan, he's... Uh... What about him? Well, he just isn't all that bad. He was very concerned about what happened to Julie. Yes, I suppose he was. Well, that's really Julie's decision now, isn't it? And after all, she's old enough to live her own life now. Oh, would you excuse me a minute? I must call Madame Vasiliev and tell her what's happened. Oh, no, I, I don't think I'd call her. I'll bet she already knows what happened. Of course. Of course she does. 